With all due deference to separation of powers, last week the Supreme Court reversed a century of law that I believe will open the floodgates for special interests, including foreign corporations, to spend without limit in our elections. I don't think American elections should be bankrolled by America's most powerful interests, or worse, by foreign entities. Well, that was President Obama during the State of the Union address two and a half years ago, speaking about the Supreme Court case that was won by the conservative group Citizens United. It was about whether corporations have free speech rights. Now the group is making its first entry into the 2012 presidential campaign through a provocative new film titled The Hope and the Change. It is set to debut at the Republican National Convention in Tampa next week. Here is a brief clip from the trailer. You promise a change, and we all got full. I have never been more broke in my life. It isn't working. It's not working. The hole's only getting bigger. It's sad. It's almost like a buyer's remorse. Obama let me down. Citizens United president and producer of that film, David Bossy, is here, along with the director of the film, Steve Bannon. Gentlemen, thank you both so much for being here. Oh, thanks, thanks for having us. So, David, let me start with you. The president was talking about you in that clip at the State of the Union, upset with you and the justices on the high court who agreed with your argument that citizens should have, that, that corporations should have free speech rights to weigh in on political matters. Right. In 2008, this film and its advertisements would have been illegal. As a matter of fact, criminal punishable by prison time for, some, for an American making a movie and wanting people to see it. I found that to be outrageous, and that's why we went to the court. That, that's what this case was about. It wasn't about creating American crossroads or allowing the unions to spend unlimited amounts of money. Which in were politics, effects which happened, of the which, decision. Which happened. But it's, the, the reality is we have more speech now, not less. And that's a very important thing. Your average American can participate in the political process, whereas before they couldn't. No, the, uh, the bedrock of the First Amendment is that the answer to speech you don't like is more speech, not less that's speech. Right. Uh, but the president believed that there should be a difference when it comes to spending and political campaigns. What was the difference between Citizens United and your desire to make a film that was not necessarily pro-Democrat and what Michael Moore had been doing through Fahrenheit 9-11? There was no difference except the that the class that we were in was not the same as Michael Moore, meaning the Federal Election Commission and Congress had allowed the media exemption, which allows Fox and Lionsgate and the New York Times and the Washington Post to participate in a political process like no other American can. You get the media exemption, therefore you can... He's a filmmaker, yes, he's a filmmaker. so he can make whatever film he wants. Right. In my case allows him to do that it allows us to do that before our case he was allowed to do it and we weren't mm -hmm. and and that is the very important part of this entire case that people don't understand so the film steve when when you look at it is a bunch of folks who voted for Barack Obama in the last election, right? I, Democrats I, I, and moderates? A year ago, we want, Dave and I sat down and talked and said, let's think about in 2012, late 2012, what's going to determine this election? Seven to eight states, 100 counties, Democrats and independents who voted for President Obama, where are they now? And so we went out for a whole year doing focus groups, finding people who are registered Democrats, registered independents, who voted for President Obama, the journey of their lives, where they see the country right now. And it's a, it's, it's a film that lets the American people talk, not the political class What talk. is the message? What, what do you walk away feeling at the end of this hour-long I, I, I think you understand one thing, that the American people are far ahead of the political class and the media that understand the country's in an existential, financial, and economic crisis that's destroying the middle class, and that no one is listening to them, and they're incredibly disappointed with President Obama. Now, they, they invested President Obama with a lot of hope. They didn't. The change they saw is not the change they want in this country. What does it mean, the hope and the change? Why that title? Because that was the campaign. That was the, his his thing was about hope and change. And so we said the hope and the change, and let's just see what it plays out. And see whether it really is the hope yeah. and the change promised. Exactly. We, we hope the film starts a conversation. That's really what the goal of the film is. We want to have as many people as possible watch it and start that conversation. That's very important. You're, already, get, you're already getting some brushback though, because they say I haven't seen the film because it hasn't been released. But there's a two-minute trailer. But they say that in this film you show events in a way that's not 
accurate and not fair to President Obama. In particular, the example I read was you show him taking the oath of office with Chief Justice John Roberts, and then you show the Lehman bankruptcy, which actually predated. Well, his no, no. We wanted to go back presidency. and show. We wanted to go back and show that the Lehman bankruptcy was what the, Lehman, the collapse of Lehman Brothers is what started the financial crisis, or at least the triggering event, and then have people talk about that. People, remember, people look at Tim Geithner and President Obama as kind of one and the same. And the fact that the TARP bill was passed in November is not when they look at their lives of these bailouts and, and all the stimulus package. They look at it. These are low and medium information voters, right? They look at it all as one and kind of hold President Obama accountable for not holding people accountable. So it's bailouts. not that these Democrats and, and independents believe that he caused the financial no, crisis, absolutely but not. they absolutely don't believe not. he's In fact, in the delivered. film, they, they all say the fact that they knew the country was in tough shape when it, when it, when you see the film, they know the country was in tough shape when they took over. I so want to ask you this, because you're going to unroll it at the Republican National Convention, and it's going to show their and, and the going to go to movie theaters. And the theaters, DNC. And the, going the DNC is going to go to movie theaters. But I, I have to ask you, Dave, but as the person behind Citizens United, what was your reaction when you heard the president calling you out at the State of the <laughs> Union, and yeah. to the point where the Supreme Court Justice Samuel Alito had to shake his head no? No, saying you've mischaracterized. Not true. Not true. What, what's that like for you? It, it was a surreal moment. My wife and I were at home watching the State of the Union, like a lot of Americans, and, and to hear that you're being talked about by any president is, is pretty amazing. It's jaw-dropping, it, it, right? It really, it really was, and, and, and I had to watch it several times to realize that that actually happened. <laughs> so, but it, look, these guys, first, the hypocrisy of it all, the hypocrisy of it all. He st says for years he's not going to participate in this, and then, of course, they have a, a super PAC. So that's wow. the issue. That's the that's, so that's one of the moments you've got to have TiVo. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you both so much.